The year was 2005, and Black Box Studio was still in development of the future Need for Speed games at its time, this being of course Need for Speed Most Wanted 2005, and Need for Speed Carbon later on. Most Wanted from 2005 was a massive success to the Need for Speed franchise when Black Box Studio was in the development, this being of course said because there was a massive amount of car customization and racing as well as the car culture within the game. It even featured a good story as far as I'm concerned. This game also featured two types of celebrities in regards to characters and vehicles, that being of course for example the BMW M3 GTR, and celebrity characters such as, you know, Sergeant Cross. I want every single unit after the guy. Everyone? EVERYONE! All taken into consideration, Need for Speed Most Wanted 2005 featured multiple things you could do inside this game. You could free roam. That existed in Underground 2. You race through some small time events, whether it's speed traps, time trials, or even circuit races or even sprint races, in order to gain enough bounty to race against one of the few blacklisted rivals. All of this was in a unique concept that people haven't seen before, and they loved it back then. And as time has gone by for the Need for Speed franchise, when Black Box Studios was working on this, we thought that the studio itself would eventually keep up pace and make more and more Need for Speed games. <laughs> until it changed developers. This was even said considering the fact that in 2010, the same year as Need for Speed World was released, this was even said when EA had decided to task Criterion on making a Need for Speed game that was on the open road, featured supercars but no modifications, and that you could play as the cop. That's right, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2010. This meant that time was evidentially changing, and that it was determined by EA to see who would be continuing to make the Need for Speed series. Will it be Criterion that will push on to make the new Need for Speed games, or will it be still a black box? That was to be determined. So in order to compete against Criterion Games, against Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2010, they didn't make another Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, which is their own version. Instead, they made Need for Speed The Run, which its story was quite unique, however it was a very underrated game and didn't sell enough to compete against Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2010. Meaning that Black Box Studios, the creator of the Need for Speed Underground and Most Wanted and Carbon, was no longer making another Need for Speed game after that. People find this to be an extremely good game. One would even say that Criterion would make another Need for Speed game and it would be the best out of the best that Criterion has made so far. And it was once planned that Need for Speed Most Wanted 2 was going to come out on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 after the development. Little did we know, that wish didn't come true and instead we got Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012. So the big question is that people would ask, how did Need for Speed go from love to loathe by this one game? Well, in order to look at that, we need to go back in time. January 24th, 2012. Need for Speed Most Wanted 2 Beta was actually made by Criterion Games, and throughout the development phases too, in regards to the gameplay and a story. Yes, Need for Speed Most Wanted 2 was to have a full-on story, and in which case one of the story characters from the original Need for Speed Most Wanted, which was from 2005, was actually going to come back to this game, which we know as Mia Townsend. And this is being said because there was once a script made for this character, in which case she ends up being kidnapped by a bunch of kidnappers and that we needed to rescue her before it's too late. However, this wasn't worked on since Criterion Games was still experimenting on making Need for Speed Most Wanted 2. And in regards to experimentation, there was a total of 21 builds that were known to exist inside of the PS3. However, finding those would be a pain in the ass not only to find them, but to also set them up at the same time. Inside of this game, Criterion Games wanted to add some elements that were from the other previous games, such as Need for Speed Most Wanted 2005, Need for Speed Carbon, 
and Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, which was released two years ago before this beta and before the experimentation on Need for Speed Most Wanted 2 came up to be the case. Intriguingly enough, we got the same feeling and same vibe as Need for Speed Most Wanted 2005. Not completely, but somewhat. With the whole history of this game's origin, let's get into the beginning part. Let's get to the menu. So inside of this menu, you can see that we have single player, most wanted mobile, multiplayer, socialize, and even store. All in which case wasn't finalized yet, but single player was still playable. Then we got the menu for this. We have the settings, of course, it's obvious enough. Then we go to this next part over here. In the single player menu, we could actually continue the story, which was intriguing because no story was started out. And we could actually go into free drive, which in case this was a beta, so you could choose any kind of free drive they had in the menu. Next element, car selection. So apparently, it's at a need for speed most wanted too, when you're selecting a vehicle, the camera style is the exact same thing from Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2010. I'm actually not too sure why they did that, but they just did. Gameplay footage, and it's quite clear that the game has the exact same style of atmosphere. Not completely, but Criterion Games was still experimenting on that. But what you saw right there though... Yeah, that. So if you, most of you don't know what that is, that was a Pursuit Breaker that and Gaming had crashed into. If you don't know what a Pursuit Breaker is, well, let me just say it's an object that you hit that will come tumbling down on top of the cops and will disable them for good on the pursuit. It won't always hit all the cops, but it does come in handy. And as it stands, Criterion wanted to make Need for Speed Most Wanted 2 have these pursuit breakers as well. But what got me really tripping is this camera effect that Need for Speed Most Wanted 2 contained, and it's still following the car. For what I could believe is that this game was to feature city cameras as far as I'm concerned, and it would look over at the footage of the cars that were driving by even these street racers as an example even and gaming however this camera style and setup has not been finished yet because criterion games was still experimenting with loads of stuff in most wanted 2. another thing you want to keep in mind in this beta build is that there's a small little menu that you could utilize inside of this game for anything you could even change the car you're currently driving for instance and gaming decided to change the current BMW M3 he's driving for the BMW M3 GTR for most wanted 2005, which was intriguing. But the problem is, I don't know if this was going to be on the finalized product of this game. Well, the finalized prototype, I should say. And the map, when you drive further down, wasn't really completed either. So it shows that this game was still a work in progress, not just uh, an experimentation. This is being said because the game is is missing a few roads and a few buildings and a few areas have missing textures look at this parking lot as an example all it is is just gray with some squares instead of it being an actual design of a parking lot and also these white squares exist in the middle of the road when you're driving down to the industrial part your car is suddenly a magician by not destroying or getting destroyed by that tree cut traffic vehicles that were not in the final product of the game like this taxi cab as an example overall i think this game is a little bit weird to be called a beta slash experimentation it feels like to me that the game is actually completed the only thing that needed to be done was finalizing some stuff putting and polishing some of the gameplay and include the story as a whole did Criterion Games had the opportunity to finalize this? Yes. I think Criterion had plenty of time to finalize this before EA Games came up to Criterion and told them to make a new Need for Speed game. If Criterions were to finalize this game, such as fix in the missing textures, put some more missing buildings, add the story, and some more gameplay in regards to this game as a whole, in the release, this would have made a better release than Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012. Unfortunately, that opportunity never happened. Every single thing that Criterion had worked on for this beta build was intriguing and could have made it to the final product. 
but EA didn't care. So instead, Criterion had to go by EA's as finalized order, which was a fucking stupid one to begin with, to remove all the content, then changes the formula of Need for Speed Most Wanted 2, and eventually renamed the whole entire game to become Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012. And this game alone, ladies and gentlemen, and my good friends, is the one reason why Need for Speed was becoming a loved game by lots of people to become loathed by a certain half now. And I even got some gameplay footage, so let's begin. First game impression when I was starting to play this game, what kind of questioned me is that I was driving a Chevrolet Camaro, then I changed into the Aston Martin, which didn't really happen to make sense to me. I thought it was... I thought it would make sense for me to drive a low-end sports car to reach up to the top ends. Guess not. The first impression to this game was already starting to make me feel like I'm gonna go through chronological pain mentally. It took me a while just to get the Aston Martin to get from one point to the jack spot that I needed to go to. Eventually I get to the jack spot and what I see in front of me was the Porsche 911. Now what I was supposed to do is take this car. That was easy enough, but trying to get to the race was the hard part. It was also deemed that because I was using an HP Pavilion X360 laptop, which didn't have a numpad. So in regards to racing, you would need a numpad inside of this game. And I'm supposed to go set a destination towards a race event that is literally across the street. And so I did that and got the event over with. And after that Porsche 911 race, you basically are on your own. In which case I have to say, so much for the tell rails. Now the people who have played this game previously had determined once before, this was basically Burnout Paradise but with just licensed cars. I don't want to object the statements that these people have said, but the problem is, is that Criterion Games wanted to make Need for Speed Most Wanted 2 possible. Instead, this turned out to be the case. Burnout Fairhaven. Inside of Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012, in order to race against other Most Wanted Blacklist racers, you would need to gain a lot of SP points that is pinpointed on the top screen. And once you beat every single Most Wanted Blacklisted racer, whichever one it may be, you have a chance of winning their car by smashing it into pieces. I mean, yeah, sure, this feels like Burnout Paradise, but at least inside Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012, you don't have to repair your car. In regards to cars, there is a total of 43 vehicles you could drive, plus DLC, and with a total amount of 123 jack spots. All of them obviously being scattered and hidden across the map inside of this game. Now, trying to drive these vehicles from these certain jack spots are as simple. You drive up to them, you enter the vehicle, and then you're off. And here I think buying cars is much more better. You go into Easy Drive, and then you go to Races. You'll look inside of these races, and these rewards will be the modifications you could utilize within this car. Keep in mind though, each and every single vehicle has a different set of races. The simplified version of vehicle modifications are tires, nitrous, chassis, body, and transmission. Some of you may ask, Oh, shouldn't you have nitrous in your car already? Well, that's where nitrous comes in as a modifications tab. The reason why nitrous is in a modifications tab is because there's a variety of nitrous, such as burn, power shot, and jump. Burn is basically the type of nitrous you normally use inside of the older Need for Speeds. For using burn, you hold down the nitrous button. For me, it's my Xbox input B. The burn nitrous mechanic is basically where you press and hold down B and you use your nitrous for as long as you like until you let go or until your nitrous is depleted. Power shot is where you basically use your nitrous to gain yourself a small little jump start. One tap of your nitrous button and your nitrous is already being used. To be quite honest, this kind of nitrous mechanic system reminds me of Menai Club. And as for the jump nitrous, well, let's just assume it's used for when you're grabbing some air. The major problem as to this mechanic is that for each and every single vehicle you drive that happens to be stocked, there is no nitrous inside of those vehicles. That even applies for the most wanted vehicles that you have unlocked by destroying after beating the most wanted opponent that you went against. So the only solution you have only, and this will be simply said, not on the racing side, but just being said in general, you need to race on the easy race and then win in first place. That way you could get yourself some nitrous, more specifically the burn modification of nitrous. 
I'm going to simplify the other modifications as it goes. Track tires are basically where you gain more grip around the corners. Off-road tires just give you better stability and drivability on the off-road parts. And drift tires will give you better cornering. Now for chassis, the lightweight chassis will make your car a little bit more lighter, giving you a better advantage on acceleration, possibly even control. Reinforced chassis makes your car a lot more heavier and a lot more tougher to break down. The Ram chassis is a little bit more lighter than the reinforced chassis. It may not be useful in durability, but it is more useful when you're trying to ram your opponent or a cop head on or trying to T-bone them. As for bodies, aero body basically makes you better at cornering and accelerating, possibly even gaining more better speed. The impact protection body protects your car from being hit by either a racer or a cop. Lastly but not least, the gearboxes, or I should say the transmissions more likely. Firstly, we got the short gears. So what the short gears are used for is to give your car some better acceleration. This could be very useful if you're driving a car and if it has more top speed than it does acceleration. It gives that equality of speed and acceleration towards your car. These kind of gearboxes can be best used if you want to pick up and go on certain areas where you just completely stopped. In my personal opinion, I think the short gears are best if you want to blast off away from the cops that are trying to bust you in your general area. Long gears give you better top speed on any vehicle you drive. This type of gearbox is extremely happy if you're driving on long straightaways and wanting to achieve top speed, like a freeway is an example. Now that we got the car modifications out of the way let's go ahead and talk about the one thing people likes to be chased by let's talk about the police force people like that think they can escape from a whole group of cops we'll get them now i shit you not when i say that the cops inside the need for speed most wanted 2012 are pure fucking nightmares and the reason why i say that is because the police officers inside of this game are a lot more ruthless than they are in the previous games made before it don't matter if you're going against a ford crown to victoria police car or if you're going against a whole on rhino truck you're gonna get hit real badly. All units, code 3 suspect detained. Return to previous duty. Cops aren't normally known for brutal and ruthless tactics. However, this game is a lot more different than anticipated than any other Need for Speed game played before. And done in various different types of vehicles. First set of cops drive Ford Crown Victorias. The Crown Victorias are just simple basic police cars that drive around in the city and patrolling the streets. And in all generosity, there's nothing special about these vehicles driving in the middle of the road or being involved in a police chase. Yet these suckers can still keep up. But even if the Crown Victorias are able to keep up on the pursuit, they're not going to be able to do very much besides ramming you. Best make certain that your vehicle is packing reinforced chassis, if anything. Up next we have the Dodge Charger. The only pro I have about the Charger is that it's basically a modified Crown Victoria. It can accelerate, handle, and pick up speed much more faster than the Crown Victoria in general. Let's not forget to mention that this is also more durable at some cases. The main con is that while against reinforced slash ram cars, it's still a lost cause after being wrecked, just like the Crown Victoria and the Corvette together. Not gonna lie, four doors like the Crown Victorias and the Chargers are good enough for the pursuit. The main problem about both the Crown Victoria and the Charger is that they can't keep up with speed against a hypercar and they can't keep up with durability against a truck. Cop car number three is gonna be the Chevrolet Corvette. Pros are is that this car can move a lot more quicker than the Crown Victoria and the Charger combined, and that these units are able to deploy spike strips that way they could pop their targets as tires. The cons are, unlike the Charger and the Victoria, this car is very fragile, so that means it could be destroyed real easily, and I hope you pack in reinflate tires because the spike strips are useless against that. But if you're not packing those because you don't have them unlocked or you just don't prefer it, you're screwed. That is unless you get to a repair shop. Vehicle number four is an Explorer. The pros are is that the Explorer can match against some reinforced slash ram vehicles. For this instance, a Ford F-150 Raptor inside of this game. Another thing to note is that if you're driving a much smaller vehicle, it is hard to move while boxed in. The cons are is that this vehicle is much more slower than all three of them, which means it can't keep up with the sports, super, or even hyper cars that it's trying to pursue. So in most cases, it would be best for the Fairhaven Police Department inside of this game to use these type of vehicles as roadblocks while facing against hyper cars instead of pursuing them. And lastly, but not least, the SWAT Rhino Truck. 
The pros about this vehicle is that it is very difficult to destroy. The Rhino also has more destructive power than a reinforced slash ram truck and even the rest of the other police vehicles. Once boxed in, no matter what type of vehicle you're driving, you can't move it at all. And sometimes is even declared the M4 Sherman of Fairhaven. The cons are is that this vehicle is slow as fuck and handles like shit, so it couldn't even keep up with a pursuit while trying to chase after whatever target they're chasing. This even occurs to me that a semi truck would move a lot more faster than the Rhino itself. And at that point on, it's most likely to be the case that the cops picked the most inconvenient vehicle out of the whole entire group to be chasing after their targets. But as it stands for each and every single police car inside a Need for Speed Most Wanted in 2012 has its own different type of heat, much like Need for Speed Carbon and Need for Speed Most Wanted 2005. The heat system is indicated right next to the mini map and it has a total of 6 heat levels in general. Heat level 0 slash 1 is basically the Ford Crown Victorias rolling around the streets. Heat level 0 because they're outside patrolling the streets, but also heat level 1 because because that's how police chases start. Heat level 2 is where they call roadblocks. Heat level 3 is where they're able to call in the chargers. Heat level 4 is where the corvettes are called in. Heat level 5 is where the Ford Explorer police SUVs will come into play. Heat level 6 is where the most hulking, yet the most inconvenient, Rhino SWAT trucks come in for the action. But even these cops don't end up screwing around once you enter cooldown. Because once entering cooldown, you'll be losing your heat level in a while. At this instance, after you lose the Cops, it's a good thing that you lose the heat level as well while you're trying to evade or hide from them. Which is a problem people didn't like. I'm going to put the comparison of Most Wanted 2012's cops between 2005's cops. And this is in regards to the heat levels during and after police chases. Once you're out of sight from the cops for a while, you enter into cooldown mode without a little circle on the meaning map. You go find a place to hide so that way you can let the cooldown go by a lot more faster. Once the cooldown process is completed, you are officially finished within the pursuit inside of this game. The only difference between this game's is heat levels and between Most Wanted 2012's is that the heat level in Most Wanted 2005, Carbon, and even Undercover still remains to be the same way as it is when you were still involved in police chase. Most Wanted 2012 doesn't have that style of the heat level, which people didn't like. The worst case scenario is that Most Wanted 2012's heat level is much more less than the one from 2005 because from 2005, the heat level exceeds up to level 10. And that inside of Most Wanted 2012, there isn't a special unit that is somewhat relatable to Sergeant Cross from 2005. Everyone! Aside from that, my point still stands out that the cops from Most Wanted 2012 is much more lacking and kind of a little bit more inferior on numbers than Most Wanted 2005's. While in the site or even right next to a cop, you could do some property damage that isn't cars because as far as I'm concerned, cops don't even care if you do property damage such as destroying light poles, traffic lights, or even mailboxes. I don't even care! But once you crash into some traffic, or even into another cop car, that's when all hell breaks loose and they start chasing after you. The same could even apply when you're speeding. Shit! But hey, at least the police officers inside of this game have characterization. They're antagonizing you. And yeah, I know it's said Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012, or was deemed to be Need for Speed Most Wanted 2, doesn't have a story. But the thing is, not every single racing game needs a story. And to add to that, not every single Need for Speed game needs a story, per se. Actually, about characterization, there is one more interesting thing that I want to cover in regards to this game. That is, the most wanted racers you go up against. The most wanted list has an interesting set of cars that are listed that you can race against and destroy to win them, actually. But there is one problem about this list that I have. And this actually kicks in with the lack of character Characterization for the most wanted list is because every single vehicle that is on the most wanted list that you race against is all white. 
Like, the question is, who in the absolute fuck will go into developing this game, making a car list for the most wanted list that you gotta race against, and just lazily put them to be a bland and boring color, which is all white? Like, who the fuck am I racing against? Am I racing against the house or something like that? Am I racing some sort of drugged up organization? Like, what the hell is this shit? Fire Monkey, in regards to making the mobile port of this game, actually took their time and made more clarity into the vehicles they posted up. They're given more characterization within this list. And even the further clarity they put into this is the aliases they have for these specific vehicles as to who's driving them. Why the fuck are the vehicles white? Who the fuck are driving them? And who on the wrong side of their mind thought that this was a good idea while finalizing the most wanted list? Who the fuck is him? Huh? Am I stealing from Ryder? Wow, the nigga! Though, to be quite honest, what isn't really surprising is that I have to chase after this guy and destroy his car so that way I could earn it for myself. And I say this because I played Burnout Paradise quote-unquote remastered for a while back then. While most of the formula is basically the same thing as Burnout Paradise, there was one thing that made this one a little bit more different in regards to gathering cars from most wanted racers. They'll have every advantage of trying to evade the traffic as far as I am Sure, there are sometimes they'll even have traffic thrown at you or that they throw you into the traffic All in all, it's just pretty much me saying that trying to deal with these type of vehicle shutdowns is way more annoying than it is on Burnout Paradise And after you hit them, they're still able to drive at one point if you're on an open road like this freeway as an example It usually takes me a while just to try to pursue and try to gather up these cars It got up to the point where we were at the rocks area away from the city City, and me and both the Bugatti Veyron that I was chasing after had crashed into a rock. Luckily, it transferred that I actually hit him and I wrecked him. And then I achieved the car. Not like I'll be driving here anytime soon. On the base game itself, there's a total of 10 most wanted racers you gotta beat in order to destroy their cars to claim them. With an addition of a few cars if you have DLC such as the Henny C Venom and the BMW M3 GTR and the Ford Shelby GT500. That's all there is really to cover about this game, but uh, the one thing that needs to be talked about, does this game still have online? There's one way for me to find out. And since I felt a little bit lousy to pause the game, I decided to go on to Easy Drive to access it a lot more quicker. I got myself into a lobby, and I already know it was going to take me a while just to find an online game. A few minutes later, I got myself into a lobby. Finally, and then I decided to see what was going on and as for this yellow Lamborghini Diablo That was about to drive by me had some special plans for me Which I had no idea what they were because I was new to the game Besides free roaming of course I was trying to find my Dodge Charger while trying to select a car to change into the problem is, is that I can't find the Dodge Charger anywhere on the list of vehicles that I could change into Why am I not allowed to change into the Charger? Is this because I'm a low level or is it because Criterion doesn't allow me to change into that vehicle? And here I am noticing how Criterion is starting to disappoint me and give me even further chronological pain is because they're listening to EA's is bullshit. So I picked the Ford GT because what We're fucking ever. And that same Diablo came around the corner and decided to try to give me a surprise, which was to try to wreck me into pieces. Oh yeah, I forgot. It's Burnout Fairhaven. Not surprising enough that some people will go out of their way to try and wreck you inside of this game. Yet for me, it was more enjoyable to experience this inside of Burnout Paradise instead of this game. Even considering that Burnout Paradise has a much more bigger player base than this game does. What got me confused is that eventually at one point playing throughout the game, a random event just occurred, which was a speed list event. I don't know if this host decided to start this server up originally and I don't really care because I don't want to stay in the server anymore because if anything the online inside of this game exists the only thing that is a problem is that the online player base is small 
The only last thing we're going to go through is the little extra menu, which shows you your progression and minimap. The first part is the driver details. The driver details has a list of stuff that you have done inside of this game. There is some also DLCs included. Shows how much progression you've done in jack spots and how many times you got busted and so on and so forth. But there is something I have to say about this. Unless these driver statistics are very rewarding inside of this game, they're pure fucking useless. And at the same time, nobody gives a shit about your accomplishments. The only thing that I find useful out of the driver details is that you could change your license plates and the text, which is ultimately the only disappointing thing that ever exists. Pressing page down leads you to the store, which will lead you to the origin store. However, EA decided to become a bitch and bring down origin as a whole. Up next is the settings, which you could change your audio, display, graphics, gameplay, and additional stuff. The additional I'm not certain of. Gameplay, I presume, is what you're using to play the game, whether it's a controller or the keypad. The keypad for me was very much of a nightmare because when you drive, you need to use your AZ keys to drive the car. The A using for the throttle and the Z for the reverse slash braking. Audio, much like any other game, allows you to change your in-game audio settings from your volume to the speaker type to the music order and so on and so forth. But I have the music set to zero because I don't really like listening to the music that they have in stores. And plus the sound effects inside of this game, it's really loud as shit inside of this game. So I had to turn it down so that way it's best suitable when I'm wearing headphones. The display setting inside of this game is ultimately disappointing to me because all it shows is just screen calibration and margin scale. I mean, if EA and Criterion didn't want us to change the setting of the display within this game, they shouldn't have added this shit at all. The graphics setting is a huge game changer. I had to try to turn off all of my graphical settings. Well, not turn them off, but turn them into a low so that way my game could run perfectly. And I changed the screen resolution from what it currently was shown right here in the screenshot down to 1218 by 720 to make the game run a lot more faster, of course. Gameplay allows you to change the settings for when you want to play on the controller, add subtitles to certain texts, and add vibration to your controllers and change your speedometer from the metric system to the imperial system and no matter what kind of controller you're playing on whether it's a steering wheel an actual xbox or playstation controller or the keyboard you could always recalibrate your controls with that little recalibrate controller button and inside an additional it shows you the game manual and the credits on god why does the setting option exist lastly though but not the least is going to be the medium map so the mini map gives you a big layout as to Fairhaven City, the city that you are racing inside of, with 43 cars and DLC included. And then again, I did state out that inside of this game, each and every single car has their own races. If there was a mod in here in regards to the races inside of this game, that'd be fine. At least I'd get to go through extra races. Until then, this is purely shit. Do I think that this game had potential? This game had potential. There could have been a lot of stuff that could have been added into this game. The only thing is, is that EA doesn't fucking learn about their mistakes, which is tight deadlines. Each and every single game, I feel like they've been doing this for a long while. Each and every single game, they have their studios develop three weeks per game in regards to whatever it is, even Need for Speed, which is one of the few reasons as to why Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012 was a big failure, and why it was mostly Burnout Fairhaven than it was for it being its original game. And in possibility, Criterion Games should have made an alternate script for Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012 instead of reusing Burnout Paradise and editing it to be like, you know, this. The greatest idea I can think of for EA if they want to make better games and make better sales is that they delay the games before launch. They have their development teams work a little bit of extra few weeks, maybe even like two, three months to make a video game. And then from there, we will see the results from then on. But then again, it's fucking EA. 
they won't even care. Is it possible that Criterion will mess up like this again? I genuinely don't know if that's going to be the case. It's all up to the hands of Criterion to determine how Need for Speed will go. And of course, most of us know this, is that EA has not determined what kind of racing game Need for Speed is overall. The original racing series was about roadsters and sports cars, maybe even supercars driving on the freeway and being chased by cops. This was to be the case before and during Criterion Games was ever to be popular by their very first Burnout game. Then go to the Black Box era, Underground, Underground 2, Most Wanted 05, Carbon, Undercover are all about car customization and tuner culture. One thing to add on a note, Urban styled street racing. Give a game studio named Slightly Mad Studios the rights to make a new Need for Speed game. They ended up with Need for Speed Shift, which was mainly a Le Mans style racing of Need for Speed overall. You see, EA is seeing that Need for Speed is going through on an identity crisis and can't determine what the answer is that Need for Speed is. And from here on and now, prior to the few years ago when Ghost Games shut down, Need for Speed is under Criterion's hands. Will they do good is the main problem. I don't really know. I did hear that Unbound was somewhat good, but I'm really fucking skeptical about that shit. It might become evident, not saying that it will actually happen, that I know of, that the next Need for Speed that Criterion Games will make, they're eventually gonna fuck everything up. Probably the studio will die out, and the same goes for the Need for Speed franchise as a whole. Which means the Need for Speed will become irrelevant as of some point in the future after that one game, probably. It depends on how many sales it made. Would you recommend people playing this game? And also, would you want to play the game by yourself again? If it involves people that want to play this game desperately because they haven't played it before, then by all means, I will recommend it for those kind of people that want to experience the same pain that I have to go through for this video. And keep in mind, I'm not the first one who talks about this. But aside that, the answer remains to be the same thing in both aspects. Absolutely the fuck not. I've dealt with the pain trying to make this video as much as I possibly can. I don't want to push myself to doing this any further in regards to this video game that is called Need for Speed that Criterion Games somehow fucked up on making. EA and Criterion can make the game much more better than it once was when this game was still in development with all the resources that they have and a sudden increase of time that Criterion Games needed to make this game overall a very good game for people to play. Otherwise, this game would end up in the dirt and nobody would ever play this again. Being said hypothetically and in much more simpler terms, EA games need their studios to take a little bit more time to actually develop the games. That way, when the game is finished after some quality tests and bug testing, that way they can fix those issues and then we could get the game and then we could see how many sales it made. Overall, but if this is if it remains to be the same thing that EA keeps doing over and over again, which is making video games for three weeks, and that applies for every single studio, their games are obviously gonna fuck up at one point to where EA goes bankrupt and won't make another Need for Speed game at this instance. As a matter of fact, the many hours I've spent trying to play this game, I've gone through the mental pain and I'm starting to love it, which means I had to go to the Discord and ask my friend what I could do to fix this issue. And here is what he had to say. <laughs> And that's what I'm motherfucking gonna do. And you know what? It's about time I had enough with this game. I finally see why people didn't like it very much. But I had much more of an idea as to why people didn't like it. Not because it was simply just a burnout game. But it was because of the, all the features they had inside of this game. And whatever they didn't put into the game overall. And then it felt more like burnout as far as I am concerned. Even though it's got licensed cars, it's still a need for speed game. Game. I will have to admit to that. Even though there's going to be some people that come in and watch the video after I said that this is Need for Speed practically and come out a 
of the blue and say, Oh, but this is not Need for Speed. Suck it the fuck up. It exists. It's a Need for Speed game. It doesn't make too much of a difference. It was intentional enough that EA wanted a new Need for Speed game. I don't even think they noticed a consideration it was going to be this bad because it felt more like burnout, if anything. And even if most of you hate the idea that this does not deserve to be with the rest of the Need for Speed games where they are in the history table, it practically is. Once it does exist, that means it's in the history books. And that's no exception for Need for Speed. I feel like within the future, for an eternity, that I'm always going to get hated by the Need for Speed community by some of the people who say that this is basically Need for Speed. When in reality, it just... Ugh. How do I describe this? This is literally Need for Speed, but it's the most fucked up version of Need for Speed that ever exists as far as I am concerned. But yet this shit does much more better than Need for Speed Payback does. Don't get me on the wrong footing. I know this is a bad Need for Speed game, but to clarify on bad Need for Speed games, this game does a lot more better than Need for Speed Payback. Because unlike most wanted 2012, Need for Speed Payback has a load of constant in-game purchases that you gotta go through in order to get some good parts for your vehicles. And unlike Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012, Need for Speed Payback has literally the most corniest yet cheesiest characters that they ain't even funny. And whatever cutscenes these characters are in are literally boring, such as Jess, Tyler, and even Mac. And unlike Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012, Ghost Games, when they literally were making Need for Speed Payback, they were ripping off of the Fast and Furious franchise. You can't tell me otherwise. And Payback alone is by far the worst take I've ever seen to be somewhat related to the Fast and Furious somehow. So, fuck it. Enough is enough, I'm just gonna do it. And that concludes my 40 minute essay about Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012. Feel free to leave a like, a comment, and a subscribe. And if you want to see more videos like this, feel free to hit me up on the comments section. Or even on my Twitter, the most sane social media platform to ever exist. And with this being said, I shall see you on the next episode. See ya.